Can you my little helper this morning? Yeah. Yeah. I just can I'm breaking up the chunks. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to the homestead and to another What We Eat In A Day video. Uh, we've had a lot of rain lately, so you can probably hear the creek in the background. Hopefully it's not too loud. For those of you who don't know, we're a family of nine and we live in the Ozarks of Missouri. And we've been endeavoring to build an off-grid permaculture homestead for the last uh, about nine years. Although we try and produce as much food as we can, we still have to use the grocery store quite a bit. However, we do try and get at least non-GMO or and or organic if we can. And we do try to eat as healthy as possible, but I like to try and make things tasty as well. So for breakfast, I did something that I haven't done for a very long time, and that's make homemade cold cereal. I used to love eating boxed cereal when I was younger, and even as a young adult, I eat it just as a snack often. Um, just loved pouring myself a bowl of cereal and some milk. It's just so quick and easy and crunchy and tasty. <laughs> Uh, but about 15 years ago, I gave up the box cereal, mostly because of how expensive it was to get the kind that was actually healthy. So since then, I have tried to make my own. Uh, however, it does take a bit of time, so I don't do it very often. So this morning, I decided to go ahead and make some crunchy chocolate cereal. We are getting milk again from our milk cow and we had some extra milk, so I thought that that would work well for breakfast. So for this recipe, I mixed together four cups of blanched almond flour, one cup of arrowroot flour, a half cup of coconut flour, one cup of raw cacao powder, a few scoops of both collagen protein powder and amazing grass greens, super greens. Those are optional ingredients, but uh, if you wanna have a little bit more protein and get some of those greens, even for breakfast, uh, feel free to add in whatever you want to boost the nutrition of this cereal. I also added a half teaspoon of sea salt, two droppers full of liquid stevia, a half cup of melted butter, one cup of raw honey, and that's it. So I mixed everything together. Um, I only use a spoon right at first, but then I just get my hands in there and kind of bunch it all together into a big ball. And for this recipe, I split it in half. I have two baking stones. So I put one half on each baking stone, kind of flatten it out with my hand a little bit and then roll it out as thin as possible. You really want to get it as close to cracker thin as you can. So it ends up being nice and crunchy. Got a cat below me here. I use a pizza cutter to make cuts in this, just to make it into little squares so it's sort of like box cereal. Makes it fun. And it's super fast and easy using the pizza cutter. And then I bake this at about 300 degrees for somewhere around 45 minutes. I have a cook stove so my temperature is not always even. It can go up and down, up and down. So 45 minutes is a guess. You may have to cook it a little bit longer. But the goal is to be able to touch the center and have it be firm. As it cools, it will crisp up. Um, so it may not seem crispy right at first when you're taking it off the stone, but um, once it cools, it's nice and crispy. So once this was cooled, I um, usually like to put it into a bowl to help it cool a little faster and uh, then just serve it like you would any kind of boxed cereal. Uh, we had some cranberries, so some people chose to put some cranberries on top. And I will say that this is not your typical super sweet cereal. It's more like a dark chocolate kind of a thing. So if you're a milk chocolate kind of person uh, for this particular recipe, you might want to drizzle a little honey into your bowl um, just to sweeten it up a little bit. And uh, this is also a very versatile recipe. I've also made sort of like a graham cracker uh, flavor. So instead of using raw cacao, you could use some uh, blackstrap molasses and cinnamon to make it more like a graham cracker 
flavor. The trick is just to get it the right consistency so that you can roll it out nice and thin. So sometimes you have to vary the wet and dry ingredients a little bit to get it to that right consistency. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, they're actually on to lunch now. Esther's in there right now getting that started. So she's going to be making a tuna cheddar egg bake. So I will take you back inside so she can let you know how that's coming. Hey Esther Pie, how's this egg bake coming? Good, I cracked all the eggs. All right, so you did about two dozen eggs? Mm -hmm. All right, what else should we add to this tuna cheddar egg bake? Besides tuna and cheddar. <laughs> you got any ideas? What would taste good? Well, we, should, we should probably add some flavorings and stuff. Yeah. Salt, onion, garlic, and maybe a little dill and parsley. Mmm, that sounds good. <laughs> We're just going to use three cans of tuna because we have at least one in our family that's not a tuna fan, huh? So I don't want to make yep. it too tuna flavored. <laughs> Are you helping, Abby? Yep. Sort of helping, huh? <laughs> You watching Biddle? Yeah. Yeah. I mixed in the tuna and now I'm going to put in the seasonings. About a tablespoon of salt. A good sprinkling of onion granules. A little sprinkling of garlic granules. A nice pinch of parsley. and a little sprinkling of dill. This potato mash is working pretty well <laughs> for mixing this up. Well, Esther's grating up the cheese. It's probably going to be about two cups of shredded cheese. It's frozen, huh? <laughs> we forgot to get the cheese out of the freezer, so She's having to really work at this to get it grated. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Now they are oiling a cake pan. And I think what we're gonna do is she's gonna dump the tuna egg mix in and we'll put the shredded cheese sprinkled on top. Yep. Sound good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're just having so much fun <laughs> watching them. We're going to bake it up about 350 until the center is firm. Awesome. So it'll probably be about 40 minutes or so is my guess. Our cook stove is um, up and down so it's always a guess. <laughs> yep. While that's baking I'm gonna steam some broccoli for off the side.
You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Is that Nami? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What time is it, Esther Pie? Dinner time. Dinner time. Yummy Sunday time. <laughs> yep. Here we go. Chicken. Guess what we're having for dinner? Step one and two. Get three. That's four. Done. How is it, Jay Bud? Delicious. Can't wait to try some. <laughs> Going for seconds, Josh? <laughs> Must be good. It is. <laughs> Thank you, love. Oh yeah. Looking forward to this. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks for joining us on the homestead here in the kitchen. We pray a blessing over you and yours. And whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. Mm -hmm.